Hello everyone, Silver here. Welcome back to my Fred introduction series. In this video, we will have a look at the Mission Specs Editor. This editor allows you to set some global properties and values for your entire mission. First of all, the mission title and you can also set the author of this mission. You can select whether it is a single player mission, a multiplayer mission and if multiplayer, what kind of multiplayer or if it is a training mission. In case of multiplayer, you can also select the maximum number of respawns and the max respawn delay. There's a sub-editor for custom wing names, so if you want to deviate from the standard model of Alpha, Beta, Gamma, etc. for your wing names, you can use this one here to create your very own wing name. Some mods do that. Next on the left is the Squadron Reassign box. There you can name the squadron your player is in. This is a common concept in free space that the fighter force of a capital ship is divided into several squadrons and those squadrons then per mission are divided into wings. So for example in the free space main campaign the player starts in the squadron of the 53rd Hammerheads. So here you can give your squadron for this mission a name and you can select a logo which is either a PCX file or a DDS file, the common file types for textures in FreeSpace Open. Next is loading screen selection for two different resolutions. Both seem kind of small for modern systems, but keep in mind this comes from a time period where those resolutions were state of the art. It doesn't matter too much, so use a suitable graphics file format for those. Then in the center column you can first select whether support ships are allowed at all for this mission and if those support ships can repair the hull of fighters. Canonically in free space lore support ships cannot repair the hull of fighters, only their subsystems. But you might want to change that for your mission so here you can allow that. You can select up to which level the hull can be repaired and the same goes for subsystems. Next you can select whether your ships leave trails, usually that's only done in nebulae, but if you want it for any reason also in your mission you can toggle it here and you can also set the minimum speed necessary to create those um, trails. In the third block you can select where the built-in command messages come from, usually it's the virtual sender of command and the persona is Terran command, but if you want your messages to come from some other source you can select it here, usually you want to select a capital ship of some sort here. Next is the music selection, you have two options here, the default music and the if music pack is present selection. The default music usually is one of the retail free space compositions which is always available, but if you add additional music to your mod you can use that as well. But oftentimes to keep the mod small, music is added into another package which is not required to play the mod. So this music might not be available and if that's the case then the game uses the fallback from the default music selection which is always available. The sound environment sub-editor allows you to set specific environment options for sound which can be useful in some situations if you for example want to place your mission not in space but in a planetary atmosphere or something like that. Then on the right side there are several global flags for the mission. All teams at war lifts the restrictions which team attacks which other teams. So for example a neutral team would not attack hostile team but with the all teams at war flag they would. The red alert mission flag is a special type of mission that has a very limited briefing and takes over the ship from the previous mission if it has a carry red alert status flag. Remember I talked about that in the ships editor video. So this is a mechanic for storytelling to have two missions be very closely interconnected usually taking place one directly after the other. The scramble mission flag disables the weapon and ship selection for the player so the player has to use the ship and weapon selection you as mission designer gave as default. Disallow promotion and badges is what it says. It disables the opportunity for the player to get promotions or any badges. 
disable built-in messages and disable built-in command messages do also what they say, they disable the built-in messages, which is usually of interest if you have your own voice acting and do not want to mix that up with the built-in messages from FreeSpace itself. The no traitor option disables a system that is usually in place. If you fire on a friendly ship repeatedly, then you first get warning messages by Terran command and after some time you will be considered a traitor and all other ships start firing at you. If you jump out of the mission you will get a special debriefing in that case. With a no traitor flag this system is disabled and you can fire on friendly ships without any punishment. All ships beam free by default is a very important setting if you have capital ships with beam weaponry in your mission because by default all beam weapons are locked if the mission starts and they have to be enabled by an event. But if you set this flag then all capital ship beam weaponry is enabled at the start of the mission. Allow daisy chain docking is a flag that's only useful in very rare situations. It allows a docked ship to dock with another ship, so you create a daisy chain of docked ships, which is, as I said, not very useful in most situations. No briefing should be very obvious. Toggle debriefing is similar, it disables the debriefing. The next two flags concern the autopilot feature, which can be used to create cinematics or it can be disabled at all. Same goes for player starts under AI control, so you have no control of your own ship, which is not applicable in multiplayer missions, and then the AI control has to be disabled via event. 2D mission is a very special flag as well, I'm not certain which kind of mission that would be useful for. Always show mission goals in briefing is a flag for training mission or other special missions that might not usually have the regular briefing goal screen at the end of the briefing. And then mission end to main hall will put you back in the main menu if the mission ends, which is usually of interest for the last mission in a campaign for example. Last but not least you can change the AI profile if you have a custom one, otherwise you can just leave it at FS2 retail. And then at the bottom you can set a mission description and you can add designer notes which are only shown within thread while the mission description can also be seen in game. And that's it for the mission specs editor. As you can see a lot of options to choose from which may have severe impact on your mission and how it plays. So this is one of the main configuration options for your free space mission. In the next video we will have a look at the command briefing and briefing editors which allows it to a tell a story and b tell your player what they have to do in your mission. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching this video, see you again in the next one if you like to. Until then, take care and goodbye!